All right, hello, welcome in everybody. Uh, my name is Tyler. This is the first official video for my new channel, Fourth and Inches, uh, where we're gonna cover everything around the NFL, but especially uh, through the lens of a dynasty fantasy football perspective. Uh, what better way to kick it off than it being March 2nd today. We're gonna kick it off with a big board 2024 NFL mock draft. Uh, we're gonna use PFF simulator here to, uh, to screen share as we go through. But after the Super Bowl in February, it becomes NFL draft season, right? We have the NFL combine going on right now. Uh, shout out Xavier Worthy, by the way, unofficially, I believe 421 world's fastest 40 time ever beating John Ross. We'll see if that holds. I just saw that tweet come out earlier today, but, uh, NFL combine going on right now. Obviously the, uh, senior day is already over the senior bowl, but, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a first round draft here today. And, uh, I'm going to spend a little bit more of an emphasis on the quarterback position today, simulating actually probably some quarterbacks falling, but we're going to talk about QB needs, uh, NFL team needs, things like that. And uh, yeah, welcome in, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. So not getting too crazy here. The first overall pick should stay with the Chicago Bears. Okay. Obviously, we've been seeing a lot of different things. You know, will Chicago trade out? Will they not? At this point, with the information, if you guys have been staying up with it, I think there's zero chance that uh, that they trade the pick. I don't think they're going to get offered enough for what it's worth. Uh, I don't think it's going to make sense for enough teams to to pay what they would need to get to the number one pick. Uh, and in a lot of worlds here, Washington and New England are never going to move up to the number one pick. So I just don't see it happening. That means Fields more than likely going to go. Um, most of the dialogues right now out there are around him going to Atlanta, him going to Pittsburgh. Um, I personally don't want him to go to Pittsburgh. Uh, from a fantasy perspective, I don't see it. You know, he'll, he'll probably be okay for a season or two, but th that offense has been horrible for six years now. And, um, you know, Holmgren's still going to be there. I don't know. This could be the season the, the wheels fall off in uh, in Pittsburgh, so I'm not sure. Um, Atlanta, I like a lot better. I could see it. Could make it work. Um, there's really a lot of young talent. It could be a really high-paced offense. Atlanta is picking from eight, so there's not really going to be a path for them to move up to get any of the big three. And I, I don't think I'm personally feeling ever comfortable taking somebody like a Bo Nix or a J.J. McCarthy at eight, so... Hopefully they can land fields. Obviously, Russell Wilson's still out there. Kirk Cousins still out there. He'll likely go back on a team-friendly deal in uh, Minnesota, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second here. Um, let's go ahead and scroll through the first round. So real quick, before we start, I just want to walk through the teams that need quarterbacks, okay? Chicago at number one, obviously. That's almost certainly going to be Caleb Williams. We'll leave that for now. We know Washington needs a quarterback. We know New England needs a quarterback. A case could be made for the Giants. I mean, Daniel Jones is almost certainly with this team through 2024. They have a lot of money tied up in, with him. Uh, obviously, the salary, salary cap getting raised a couple weeks ago will, will help the situation a little bit. You know, Ideally, one of the big three falls, falls to pick six. Do they take him, sit him behind Daniel Jones for a year, try to develop him? That's a very realistic possibility. I believe they have two second round picks, right? And there's a lot of wide receivers in this class. You know, everybody knows they need help on offense, need more weapons, but I, there's going to be guys in the second round they could take. This is a very possible uh, quarterback landing spot here, well, depending on what happens in the top three picks. Tennessee seems like they're sticking with Will Levis for at least one more year, so we'll see that. Atlanta needs a quarterback, which talked about them. This is where it's interesting here, kind of a big stretch where you could justify quarterbacks all, all along the board here. So Minnesota's picking out 11. 
it seems very likely that Kirk Cousins is going to come back for a team-friendly deal. They're going to need money for Jay Jetta, right? Uh, you know, there's some things floating around the, you know, around X here or there that, oh, they'll move him, this or that. I don't see it. Generational talent, like, you're going to find the money. Even if it means your team is imbalanced to its fault, even, they're going to find the money. Um, so I think it's very likely Kirk comes back for another year or two here, see what happens, but uh, he'll almost certainly be back. Let's say he's not back. Somebody's getting a heck of a deal out of a quarterback there, whoever signs him. He'll be upwards of 30, 35 plus million a year for sure, wherever he goes. Um, and he's going to get it for sure. He's definitely going to get it. Denver, obviously in need of a quarterback. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw the Sean Payton uh, press conference recently, but you know he, he, he literally said something like, whoever's next. Uh, it, it's certain that that Russ is going to be cut from his team and uh, they're going to pay him 30 plus million dollars to play for another team. That one didn't work out. Raiders picking at 13. Raiders also need a quarterback. Okay. Two things. Um, you know, one, Aiden O'Connell, the rookie they drafted last year, got some playing time. He's, he's just not it. Um, he's, he's certainly not going to be their guy going into next year. Jimmy G, I don't know if you guys saw, uh, got a PED bust. Uh, took something he wasn't supposed to take during the rehab. Got a two-game suspension. And fortunately for the Raiders, a PED violation is going to be a part of the clause of the contract where they can get out of that for way less money than they would have had to pay. So uh, that worked out well for the Raiders financially. And uh, Jimmy G will be a backup somewhere, most likely. But uh, Raiders are going to need a quarterback here as well. I don't really see Cousins, Fields going there. Uh, Russ is certainly not going there in division. Yeah, they're going to need to find a quarterback in this draft somehow. New Orleans is picking at 14. Interesting enough, it's similar to the kind of Daniel Jones scenario we were talking about with the Giants. But, like, yeah, they got a lot of money tied up in Derek Carr. He's going to be there in 2024. But, you know, picking at 14 here... Are you going to use your first round pick given their situation? I mean, they were a you know, competitive team. They, they, they could, with a couple of right moves, you know, be a contender for a very weak division, right? Um, who knows what's going on with Tampa and Mike Evans is leaving. Are they bringing Baker back? I mean, it's just a, it's a weak division. So uh, they definitely would have a shot. But yeah, could they take a quarterback and sit him behind Derek Carr for a year and save some money in 2025 and... Hopefully that person develops and is better. It's possible. Indianapolis, no. Seattle, yes. Right? Gino, they just restructured. Team-friendly deal. He's certainly going to be their guy in 2024. But new coaching regime, right? New scheme. Pete Carroll's not going to be there anymore. Um, we don't know how that's going to look. You know, that, that team might be tearing it down here soon. And, you know, do they want to draft a guy and sit him behind Gino for a year? Absolutely. Uh, as we get down into the back half of the first year, it's a little bit less teams, but you know, obviously Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville, Joe Burrow is going to be in Cincinnati. They're good. Stafford will be with the Rams. Pick twenty though, yeah. Steelers need a quarterback. You know, Kenny Pickett is not it. Mason Rudolph's asking for a trade. I believe they released Mitch already, or they said they will. They need a quarterback. You know, could be Fields, could be Russ, but. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to make a play for anyone in this draft. Maybe someone falls or they take a stab on some of the other guys in the second. Like, that might fall to the second, like a Michael Penix, something like that. But absolutely not. Two in Miami. Obviously, Jalen and CJ and Philly and uh, Houston there. Dallas is good. Green Bay is good. Tampa, maybe. You know? Depends on how much they believe in Baker, I guess. I mean, you took them to... They won a playoff game, right? They won a playoff game with them. Team rallied. You know, do you, do you draft a guy try to develop him for a year as well? Similar dialogue, yeah. And uh, that's it through the first round. Obviously, the final five teams all have great quarterbacks. All right, let's go ahead and kick this thing off. So, at number one, we're not getting fancy today. We are going to have... Chicago taking Caleb Williams here. 
interesting enough, not not to get to spend too much time on it, but some people are saying that you know we could have we could be surprised on draft day. You know, we could see somebody else go number one. Jake May. You know, there's some talks about that. I, I, you know, if you've ever seen the movie Draft Day, ironically, you know, the barbarians would be at the gates, right? That's what they talked about with the uh, the Seattle GM in that movie. And I believe that for Chicago. You know, I mean, the fans wanted them to keep fields. Obviously, the, with the information at this point, it doesn't seem like that's happening. Okay? Nor do I think they should, honestly. You know, how many times have we heard, oh, man, he, he really started picking up at the end of the year just for him to be terrible the next year. And then, oh, he pick, you know, he picked it back up. It doesn't matter. You know, if you're if you're losing eight, nine, ten games to start getting some momentum and win a few games at the end of the year, it doesn't matter. Um, so I think we've seen what what we're, what we're going to see from his, him at this point, at least with this organization. So the second part of that is Chicago, I, even if they believed that Caleb – for some reason, wasn't the guy at number one and they were going to take Drake May or something like that, I don't think they could do it. You know, the stones to do that with the, the whole dialogue here and, yeah, you'd be public enemy number one. So it's almost certainly going to be Caleb Williams. Let's move on. Pick two here. I've seen a lot of Drake May. I have. I've seen a lot of Drake May. But... Just to keep it a little exciting, and if we're obviously being a little biased through the lens of fantasy football, Jaden Daniels going here would potentially just be electric, man. You know, uh, obviously new coaching regime in there, but changing the scheme up. But th th it's, a, it's a team that's got talent, you know. Um, Logan Thomas, tight end there, will be back. Uh, I believe he's on under contract 2024. Cole Turner, their rookie uh, tight end, looks like he's got some talent and could be something. Uh, and then, of course, they've got, you know, Terry McLaurin on the side there, wide receiver one. Has just needed a quarterback his whole career. That's what they say. And, uh, you know, we'll find out. But And then they also have Jahan Dotson, uh, first-round pick last year or two years ago. That's uh, two years ago. And he'll be going in his third year with the team. And uh, the only one I believe is Curtis Samuel. I don't think Curtis Samuel will be back. But uh, Brian Robinson at running back should be his third year as well uh, coming out of Bama. So, yeah, I mean, like, put some pieces together here. You know, they need a little bit of help with the O-line, but we're going to go ahead and give him Jane Daniels and just imagine for a minute the ceiling and the electric team that this could be. Oh, yeah. All right. Pick three. This is where this is where we're um, we're not going to get too fancy, but I could totally see if New England's not sure, right? If New England's not sure, they could not take him. But it, it, it's more likely that they're they're going to take the guy or they're going to trade out of it. Though. Like, not taking Drake May or a quarterback here seems very unlikely. I'm just thinking really quick, like... Who would actually move up here? Alright, we're going to... We're going to stick and pick here. I'm not going to get too fancy for the first one today. Drake, man. <clears throat> Look. Drake May is a big boy. He plays like Josh Allen, Justin Herbert type. You know, strong arm, durable. You know, I, I, I saw an interesting take on this recently too. Just, just hear me out for just one second. Drake May was offered potentially millions of dollars to transfer out of North Carolina. Transfer out of North Carolina, go play down at Bama, right? Go play at, uh, at Ohio State, right? I'm telling you right now, if Drake May was a Buckeye in 2023, 
or if he played for the Crimson Tide in 2023, I don't think anybody's going to question him at number one overall. I think it changes everything, right? You know, because the question marks in Drake May's season were, well, hey, you know, in 2023, he didn't have the best year, you know? He, he missed a few throws, okay, this or that. Well, if you remember, Josh Allen missed a lot of throws. For a year or two, he was the most in inaccurate quarterback in the NFL. That doesn't, that's not a sticky enough thing for you to dodge someone. And, you know, unless you have no faith in your ability to develop quarterbacks, then that's different. But I think if he went to one of those other schools, I don't think we would question it at all that he's the surefire number one, Caleb would go to. So we're going to go ahead and stick and pick here and uh, trust that the Patriots make a great decision. Now, this is a fun pick. Everyone has a, you know, unless there's a shakeup in the top three picks, everyone has Marvin going here. Every once in a while, somebody might say, oh, they're going to, you know, pull the trigger on Malik. I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. And, and look at, you know, let's say MHJ wasn't in this class. Malik Neighbors is the surefire wide receiver one. Right, a lot of people have it as one A, one B, but I mean Marvin is just an, a, an absurd elite NFL prototype, ready, you know. And uh, from a fantasy perspective, super excited. Now, difference though, if we look at the board here, Marvin's obviously going to end up on the better team, the better situation, right? You know, Jonathan Gannon, what he's doing down in Arizona, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Like obviously, kind of scrapping year one, they tore the thing down to the the nubs but uh Kyler Murray you know he's looking better at the end of the year he's looking healthy give him a weapon like this obviously uh Hollywood Brown will be out of there you know so they'll have Michael Wilson the rookie that they had last year on the other side I'm not sure if Rondale Moore has one year left on his contract he might uh not that he's been super relevant um uh, so they're gonna lock in their wide receiver one here Marvin Harrison Jr. A lot of people are saying this is where the draft starts. Pick five, okay? The Chargers are picking at five. Uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh <clears throat> is the new head coach. It's been the talk of the town. Jim wins wherever he goes, okay? And there's also a reason, you know, he interviewed in Atlanta, right? He interviewed in, uh, so, you know, just there's a, there was a lot of head coaching positions open. Right? Everybody, I'm sure, wanted to talk to him. You know, not just the Chargers, Seattle, New England, all those teams that, that just got new head coaches. I believe there's eight new head coaches this, this year, which was uh, a lot. I believe there was only three or four last year. But this pick is significant because it's the first pick he's going to make uh, with the new team, with the new organization. So we're going to just talk through this pick really quick, okay? Because there's a couple ways to look at it. If we're looking at it from a fantasy football perspective... It's Brock Bowers. It's Brock Bowers. Like, I don't want it. I, I wouldn't want him. Like, if, if he doesn't go here, I would want him to fall to, I believe, 18. Yeah, Cincinnati's at 18. I would want him to fall to 18 and play with Joe Burrow, right? Now, T. Higgins did just get franchise tagged, and he's coming back. That's not something I, you know, I didn't expect him to be with the team next year. Um, but this could be a potentially huge weapon with great quarterback play in Cincinnati, but does it make a ton of sense for him to go to the Chargers? Absolutely. You know, um, I don't see it happening though. Okay. And here's why. Now we're going to, now would I love to see it from a fantasy perspective? Yeah. I love that. I can, I can only imagine a Herbert Bauer stack. That would be awesome. Especially with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams aging out one year left. And, you know, obviously Q's didn't work out last year, their first round pick. So <clears throat> probably not going to happen. And here's why I think it won't happen. I don't think he'll, I don't think you can take a tight end at pick five in the NFL. Okay. And here's why, especially when, if anybody of you guys haven't seen it, go check out the new uh, franchise tag pricing that essentially the NFL puts out. Like if you're going to tag someone, here's, here's what the going rate essentially. Okay. Well, if you, in general though, if you think about, the highest paid players at their positions, right? The highest paid tight ends in the year, or the highest paid tight ends in the league per year, 14, 15, 16, 17 million. Like maybe they're like, I'm not even sure what Kelsey's last. Did he get 18, 17 million? I'd have to check that for you. But um, 
when you think about other positions, like left tackle, these are, or wide receiver, these are much more expensive positions. When you're comparing the best at what they do, there are tackles in the league, <clears throat> you know, 20, 25 plus million per year. They, it's just a much more expensive p position uh, than tight end is, okay? And, and it's more valuable, right? And so look, do I want to draft Brock Bowers here? Or do I want to draft something that's significantly more costly, right? So if you're, if you're thinking about the team as a business, which by the way, guys, NFL's, the NFL teams are businesses, okay? It's not just about sports, not just about winning and losing games. It is a business, like, and things cost money and you need to also make money to pay for those things. So that's why a lot of it, I, I see a tackle going here, right? Uh, and I'll explain the Harbaugh uh, take on it as well. But you got to take a tackle here because it's a bad investment otherwise, right? I can get a great, like, you might get a top 10 tackle, you know, who knows where Joe Out will be. But let's say, he, let's say he finishes as a top 10 tackle in the NFL. Hey, great. I got this guy locked up for five years, right? Because you get the fifth year option on first round picks. That's a really good deal if the guy stays healthy and obviously can make a big impact for your team. Not that Brack Bowers wouldn't, but it's not worth the money of what pick five should be getting you. And for this last reason, we are going to take Joel here, but here's the last reason. It's a safe pick, right? Harbaugh needs to come in and improve this team right away. Now, here's one thing that this team couldn't do last year. The team couldn't run the ball, Okay. Eckler was hurt too, definitely decline, likely not going to be with the team here. Makes no sense for the for him to be with the team. Harbaugh's publicly already said that they want to go out and be aggressive and towards grabbing someone. And a bunch of teams also announced that they're not tagging their running backs, right? Dallas said, said, said we're not tagging Tony Pollard. The Raiders have said they're not going to tag uh, Josh Jacobs because the, the new tag rates are expensive. And... Um, you know, Chargers obviously aren't going to tag Eckler. And more importantly, New York Giants are not tagging Saquon Barkley. And uh, I, I think Harbaugh is going to be aggressive and going out and trying to get one of those guys. And Joe Alt's going to just really compound this offensive line, right? Um, they have Rashawn Slater at left tackle, arguably one of the best tackles in, in all of football, you know, up there with Payne Sewell and Trent Williams, in my opinion. And, um, Joel Alt can come in, come into the right side, shore it up, you know, get physical. You know, they want to start, Harbaugh wants them to become a physical team that's going to push people around and body people a little bit. And uh, I, I, I think this is a, a really good pick to start changing the culture there as well, right? Um, outside of that, you know, there's, there's dialogue for receivers to be had, of course. Malik Neighbors, you know, could be taken there at pick five, right? It would be another surefire weapon for them. I'm, I, I think the team has bigger needs right now. You know, obviously Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, injury concerns, things like that. But, you know, maybe Cuge develops and gets a little better, right? They still have uh, Josh Palmer for one more year. It's not like it's a weak receiver room or a, a shallow receiver room. So um, there's also a very deep class here. You know, they could, they could use a second or a third on a receiver and, and pad the room a little bit more. Um and I think it's likely that they uh, go a little bit more aggressively after one of the 2025 drafts. All right, moving on. Giants pick six here. I, uh, I almost certainly think, like obviously a, a quarterback didn't fall here as we talked about in the beginning of the video, but it almost certainly has to be one of two things, right? We know they need weapons, right? They have – Darren Waller is probably their best player on offense. Couldn't stay healthy. Uh, Wandale Robinson can't stay healthy. He's a decent talent but can't stay healthy. And, and, and they're turning over a lot of that wide receiver room this year. And not that any of them were particularly great. But, yeah, they need, they need help on offense. Malik Neighbors has been going here a lot. I've seen him in a ton of mocks going here. Uh, Roma Dunze from time to time. But if it's not that, it's – can we keep Daniel Jones a little bit more safe, 
All right, can we protect the guy? They need help on the offensive line. Um, but uh, a talent like this, unless they can move back a bit, it's going to be Malik Neighbors. That's who we're going to put here. And uh, see if Daniel Jones can uh, have a little bit of a resurgence. See if he can stay healthy, though. Can't do that without an offensive line. But I don't know if they're, they're going to be able to pivot off of neighbors here. I don't know. All right, moving on. Pick seven, Tennessee Titans. We know they're sticking with Will Levis for at least one more year, right? They're going to give him a shot. That team needs weapons, too. Needs weapons really bad. You know, uh, they got Chigo Conquo at tight end. Decent talent. I think they need to give the ball more, actually. Um, and uh, Traylon Burks, who I believe was a first-round pick three years ago, who went in the class with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave in them, uh, just hasn't panned out. You know, he's had a little bit of trouble staying healthy, but those kind of go-route, contested catch, 50-50 guys, you know, we saw what happened with Cuge last year. Just doesn't always... Uh, pan out so we'll, we'll see hopefully he can have a little bit of a resurgence um, but yeah th this team needs needs weapons but more importantly they got to protect uh, Will Levis and and this guy just cannot feel pressure to his blind side you know he could see it to his front side he could, and that was on the tape right and I think that's why he fell out of the first round last year obviously Tennessee took him in the second round last year but uh, they took Malik Wallace the year before that in the second round that didn't pan out but they, they have to protect him. It's the only shot. So this is uh, certainly going to be a tackle here. I'm going to go ahead and give him Talisi Fuaga, Oregon State. Excellent tight end. Excuse me, excellent tackle. We'll take a quick look at it here, but really big boy, 6'6", 334. I mean, just give us something that can protect Will Levis, man. It was uh, it was. It got to a point where it was just brutal. They were one of the worst offenses in the NFL last year. So keep the guy a little bit more safe. And, uh, you know, he hopefully continues to develop. Maybe they can draft some additional weapons for him in the later rounds. Pick eight, Atlanta Falcons. Assuming that they get a quarterback in free agency somehow or trade for one. They have some needs as well. So QB definitely. I don't see a world where they can take Bo Nix or J.J. McCarthy here. Not at pick eight. So do they trade back and try to take him, you know, down here somewhere and someone wants to move up because they got a guy they want and they can get him here and it's not going to, it's going to be the right price. Okay, maybe. I'm not going to mess with that today. Um, I don't see it being a wide receiver. You know, I don't like, I mean, they've gone offense in the first round the last three years in a row, so I wouldn't be surprised, but you know, Kyle, I think they've had pick eight also every time. You know, I think Pitts went somewhere around eight. I think Drake London went at eight, first receiver off the board that year. And then Bijan at eight at eight last year. So it, it just, it can't be. Um, and for that reason, assuming they can get a QB, QB in free agency. We're going to go defense here. We're going to go edge rusher. Dallas Turner, Jared Verse are the two that we're seeing a lot. I'm going to go ahead and stick with uh, with Dallas Turner here. Get him a pass rush. Get somebody that can get in there and make some plays. Yeah, he's... Dallas Turner is really good. 6'4", 242. Elite talent. Had a great year. Had a good combine as well. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, if Justin Fields, if they can get Justin, because, like, they could trade Justin Fields for not very much. They can get him for, like, a second and, like, a fourth, you know? Get an elite edge rusher like this, you know? That team could definitely win a weak division, no doubt. All right, back to Chicago at nine. <clears throat> they obviously took Caleb Williams at one, traded away Fields in this, in this thought process. Uh, DJ Moore is under contract there. They're wide receiver one. Darnell Mooney, I believe, 
is in his final year of his rookie deal. So 2024 will be his last year with the team. Uh, you know, they drafted Tyler Scott last year. He hasn't quite materialized yet. Maybe he's just still being developed. Um, I believe Equinemia St. Brown will not be with the team. I believe. So this is almost certainly wide receiver here. I, I It doesn't make sense, you know. And, and it's like, hey, get Caleb some more weapons, you know. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take Rome Odunza here. Love this guy. I really do. Um, it's just ironic that we have such crazy talents with Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison in this year's class because he could arguably, arguably be the wide receiver one in some of the previous year's classes we've had, other than the stacked year with London and Wilson and Olave. All right, Jets at 10. So I don't see – well, well, this will be a quick pick. I don't see a world where the Jets don't prioritize the offensive line. Okay. Yes, they had injuries. Um, you know, I think it was Elijah Vera Tucker. I think Mekhi Becton's had some issues. Um, keeping Rodgers safe and protected. And he literally got hurt the first play of the first drive of the first game of the season. Out for the year, right? I mean, and it's just a bummer for, you know, the Brees Halls, Garrett Wilsons of the team. But uh, I rooting for him. Rooting for him to stay healthy. Rooting for a Garrett Wilson breakout. And uh, they got to keep the guys protected. So we're going to take Olu Fashanu here. Tackle out of Penn State. And uh, try to shore up that, that, that front line, that front five a little bit more. And um, hopefully Aaron Rodgers can bounce back and do it, do what he's done. You know, so it was just a couple years ago that he was the MVP of the league, guys. Let's, let's not forget that. Obviously, he's a bit older coming off an Achilles, but... Seen crazier things happen. Peyton Manning came back after a broken neck. He was an old guy too. So you never know. All right. This is where it's interesting. Okay. We've seen QBs go here. I don't think that's what's going to happen. All right. I'm almost, I'm almost certain Kirk Cousins comes back. And uh, frankly, I'd prefer it that way. And... Uh, from a fantasy perspective, we've seen what Kirk Cousins can like. He was he played great last year before he got hurt. He played great, you know. And uh, Jetta needs him. Jordan Addison's there now. Hawkinson. I mean, it's just a it's an electric offense. And uh, they did just release Alexander Madison, so the team needs a running back. Obviously, Dalvin Cook's gone. Ty Chandler, I believe, will still be around, but he's not a guy. He's not going to be a bell cow guy. They need, they're going to have to work somebody else in there with them. But uh, for that reason. Teammates a lot of work on defense too. I think we need to get we're gonna give this team someone to build around. They need to change the culture of that defense. They've lost a lot of people. And they need a lot of help at linebacker. So we're gonna go ahead and give them Liati Latu here. Linebacker out of UCLA just came off a phenomenal season. And by the way, he's got quite the story. So if any guys have time, you know, look into Liati Latu's story. But 6'5", 265, senior coming out of UCLA, and uh, mature. I also just see him coming in here and becoming a playmaker right away. You know, scheme shouldn't be a problem, and uh, hopefully become a leader on this defense right away. Denver at 12. Oh, man. Here's, here's an interesting thought on this really quick. There is almost no dialogue out there happening around Michael Penix and hardly any around Bo Nix. In fact, I'm seeing a lot of J.J. McCarthy getting juiced up, you know, and, and I don't think he is bad by any means. I don't think he's elite by any means either. Like he could, with landing spot and situation and scheme, could he be successful? Absolutely. I'm not saying he can't be. But... Teams also are smart in the sense that they'll prop up narratives around certain players in hopes that the eyeballs are off the guy that they really want to look at, right? Or that, or that the guy can really actually just fall. So, throw a curveball here. Because I think Sean Payton likes Bo Nix. 
I think he likes Bo Nix. We know Russ is not going to be with the team. He said something the other day. I talked about that earlier. And, uh, you know, the next guy, we want to get it right. And, uh, you know, the way Bo Nix plays, the type of tactician he was in Oregon, very Drew Brees-esque, you know, similar playing style, smart, could I think could run and understand, you know, Pey Sean Payton's schemes and systems there. And, yeah. Raiders at 13. If it happened this way, to make it a little exciting, we're going to have our fifth quarterback go off the board here. And the Raiders are going to take J.J. McCarthy. Okay. I just talked about Jimmy G earlier. Obviously, PED problems, this and that. The Raiders are going to be able to save a bunch of money, which is huge for them. That with the salary cap increase, you know, is something they actually really needed because this team's got a lot of holes. But... Aiden O'Connell's not the answer, okay? I don't realistically see a path for them to get any of the other big names in free agency. Justin Fields is almost certainly not going there. Russ is in division. He's not going there. And in this example here, we had Kirk returning back to Minnesota. So, you know, who else are you excited to get, right? We don't, we don't care if Zach Wilson goes there. We don't care if Mac Jones goes there. So, you know... Sam Howell will be a backup in Washington, most likely. You know, I, this is very possible. This is very possible. And uh, it's very possible that the team is better in 2024 with him than they were in 2023. But the, truth be told, Raiders, Denver, coin flip for last place in the division, AFC West. Like, the Chiefs are going to win. And I think the Chargers... You, know, you can make a great case. They they were you know they were in the wild card round two years ago. Things fell apart. You know some wheels fell off last year, but I they could very easily be back there and uh, be a wild be a contender for the wild card in the FC. New Orleans picking at fourteen. This is uh, this is an interesting one, right? So. You know, if Bo Nix or JJ falls to 14, like like we talked about earlier, could they take a guy, sit him behind Derek for a year to try to develop him? Absolutely. That, that That's something that can absolutely happen. Um, you know, or, or maybe even like a Penix or, or somebody else like in the second round. But because they're off the board already, you know, do they need help on the offensive line and showing that up a little bit and keeping Derek Carr, or Derek Carr protected? Yeah. Did Derek Carr miss a lot of throws and a, at times a fairly inaccurate quarterback last year because of the pressure? Absolutely. But they need a lot of help on defense, and uh, Byron Murphy's still on the board. Just had a phenomenal combine, by the way. I, uh, it's actually almost unlikely that he makes it this far, but uh, they're going to go ahead and take Byron Murphy here, improve that defensive interior that they need to quite desperately. <clears throat> Tested really well at the combine, by the way. You know, 6'1", 308, moves quick. Great against the run, too. Um, Indy, pick 15. Interesting, interesting spot here. Okay. Anthony Richardson obviously only saw a couple games of him last year. Michael Pittman will almost certainly be back. But I think this is where... They're, we're going to see our first defensive back come off the board. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give the Colts here, Nate Wiggins. Corner out of Clemson. Had a phenomenal junior year. 6'2", 185, great hands. Seems to understand the game well. Seems to be a very smart guy and just... Uh, Something that India is in desperate need of, to be honest with you. But um, first quarter off the board here, Nate Wiggins. I'm going to the Colts at 15. Seattle is pick 16. Now, this is interesting. Seattle uh, took uh, I mean, he's his name's escaping me at this exact moment, but took a corner last year in the first few picks. Absolute stud. His name is evading me at this moment. I'm sorry. 
But they're a team prior to that that almost never would do that. And, and I've seen a lot of takes recently where they're like, hey, corners just are not worth being taken in the first round. Yeah, are, is it an inc incredibly hard position, important for your team, important to have right? Yes. But if you develop corners well, and you know what to look for, and you pick them well, you, you should be able to find a lot of value in the later rounds, right? And, you know, Pete Carroll, I believe that, right? They had um, the guy the year before ended up being top five corner in the league. And I think he was a seventh rounder, right? So, something to think about. But I, I'm really curious to see how many corners go in the first round this year. Because the, the, there's a lot of logic to that. And there's more and more corners coming out of uh, later rounds that are good. That are really good, you know? All right, Seattle here. Need a center, need a guard. Need an edge rusher. In most of my mocks, I'm, I'm narrowing this down to just a couple things, okay? It's Jared Burse or Dallas Turner on the board here. It seems very likely it's going to be one of those two. Could also see it being Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon here, center. Could easily be moved to guard. Arguably, the, arguably the, honestly, the best at the position in this class right now. To keep it a little exciting later, we're gonna say Jared Burst stays. Jared Burst stays on the board. They're gonna take Jackson Powers Johnson here, improve that O line a little bit, and uh, see if Geno can bounce back this year. This makes a lot of sense to me. This next pick. So, Jacksonville at seventeen, they need a lot of help on defense. They do need help on the O-line as well. They need a guard and center support as well. Obviously Jackson going there. We're gonna go defense. So, could I see Cooper DeGene going there? I could. Guy can play everywhere. They can move him around, use him as they need. Quinion Mitchell, maybe. But Josh Allen is leaving this team in free agency. He's most likely gonna get paid. He'll go somewhere else. I, I highly doubt he's back with Jackson going in the, in the next year. So to give him a little bit of pass rush support, losing Josh Allen is going to be a big hit to the defense. We're going to go ahead and take Jared Burst here at pick 17. And there it is, pick 18, Cincinnati. Look, this is so tough, okay? It goes back to a little bit of the money when I talked about what I talked about at pick five with the Chargers taking Joe Alt, but... Joe Burrow is getting hurt because they can't protect the guy, right? It's the classic storyline of you don't want to be picked at number one because the team suck at number one, right? It, most of his career already, he's just been getting banged up. They need help on the O-line. They do, you know? I've seen, you know, if we look at who's on the board still, you know, I've seen J.C. Latham go here quite a bit. I've seen... Amarius Mims go here. I've seen Troy Fatana go here. Uh, I've even seen, you know, Tyler Guyton being brought up to, to a pick like this. Because they need it. They do. But that's so boring. <laughs> so boring. I mean, it makes sense from an NFL standpoint. It makes sense from a financial standpoint. And if you think about the NFL and these teams as a business, yes, tackle here makes a ton of sense. And there's some good ones on the board. Some great ones, actually. But Brock Bowers is still here, right? And if, and when when the experts are talking about his talent, right? Once in a lifetime generational talent. You're not gonna see players like this. The way you can scheme them into their offenses, this and that. Here's the other thing, though. Okay. Now, if we're thinking about from a fantasy football perspective, real quick, bear with me. Where a player like this goes is just as important, if not more important, than when he goes. So. Brock Bowers, you know, there, there's some offensive teams in this league, some offensive-minded head coaches in this league, right? Sean McVay. <clears throat> so those are all important things, right? If he, if he gets to a defensive-minded head coach or a defensive-minded team, uh, it's, it's going to be a bummer from a fantasy perspective. Um, that I know already, right? Kind of like Kyle Pitts in Atlanta. Didn't exactly pan out. Team that runs the ball all day and prioritizes defense. 
Not great for fantasy. So, <clears throat> to keep it fun, we're going to say they do it. We're going to say they go for it. Even though Burrow's not as protected as he should be, they have Higgins coming back on the franchise tag. They need to extend Chase. So, we're going to give him a weapon. And this could, Joe Mixon should be back. Chase Brown will be there. Probably, if Joe can stay healthier, probably top five offense in the league. Brock Bowers going there. This would be absolutely insane. Would love to see it. We'll find out on uh, April 22nd, River Draft Days. All right, Rams are picking at 19. This is an interesting one because there's plenty of ways I could see it going. Um, let's let's take a look at the Rams offense for a sec, okay? Kyron Williams totally panned out, absolute stud. I think they took him in like the third or fourth, maybe even the fifth round, like, you know. And coming into last year, not a lot of expectations. Cam Akers is gone after a couple of weeks, and this guy's the bona fide bell cow getting majority of the work and tons of receiving work. Puka Nakua on the other side, sixth round wide receiver, seventh round wide receiver, just, you know, and, and I and I hate that I missed that, by the way. Hate that I missed on him. You go back and watch his BYU tape, he looks the exact same in the NFL. Stud, absolute stud. Um, and then, of course, they still have Cooper Cup there. And it uh, looks like Davis Allen will be starting at tight end, you know, while Higby will probably be on the pup with that, uh, that knee injury. But... Um, other than the offensive line, you know, they can use some support there. You know, keeping Stafford and, you know, with his age, like not letting him get banged up is very important. You know, they're, they're, they're playing for Super Bowls with the Rams, right? They got an aging quarterback, shouldn't be around for another, probably around for another year or two. But, you know, and, and then at some point they're going to have to tear it down or, or try to make a play for another QB to keep it going. But this is almost certainly a tackle or defense and um you know that that t that defense has gotten weaker and you know Jalen Ramsey's gone they they need some ballers on defense and uh I think this is where we're gonna have you know it's a toss-up between Nate Wiggins and Terry and Arnold honestly but some people perceive as the best corner in this class we're gonna have them go Terry and Arnold here All right, Pittsburgh at 20. They need a lot of help on defense too. Defensive back, linebackers, they need help on the O-line still. That team could not move the ball. But um, some of these guys aren't gonna make sense here. You know, you're not gonna take a Zach Frazier here. Be a little bit of a reach, I think, at pick 20. I don't think that's gonna make sense. So they're, they're gonna have to go you know, best defensive player available here. What's going to make sense for them? I like Cooper DeGene in a Steelers uniform and a ski, you know, just the mentality, you know, he's got that dog in him. The, the steel curtain of the, you know, how the Steelers and, and how they've taken so much pride in their defense forever. Absolute stud. And uh, yeah, coming at 6'1", 207, just, you know, played really great for Iowa. You know, you guys have seen him. He's all over Sports Center. His his tape is amazing. Check it out if you haven't seen it. We're gonna take Cooper Machine here. All right, Miami at pick twenty one. They need help on the offensive line. Um, continuing to shore it up there. They need to continue to be able to run the ball, play off those play actions, keep Tua safe. Obviously, with the the scares we've had with him recent years and head injuries, things like that. Concussions. J.C. Latham and Amarian, Marius Mims are still on the board here. Yeah, this has, this has to be a tackle. We're going to give Miami J.C. Latham here. And keep that offense rolling. Keep Tua healthy. That's the goal there. All right. Um, Philly... <clears throat> Interestingly enough, it's actually saying here in PFF in the mock drafts that they need a wide receiver. I'm not sure why they're saying that. Because A.J. Brown's under contract. I believe they're in the final year of Devontae Smith's deal. You know, so they'll have those guys. You know, I wouldn't say it's like 
They're not taking a receiver at 22. They're just not. Um, it's, you know, some linebacker could be, you know, they got Peyton Wilson here in North Carolina State. I think it's going to be a defensive back, though. Because, look, I mean, um, they're going to lose some people this year. But that secondary in the back half of the year and, you know, even heading into the postseason was just a nightmare. And they need help. They need guys that can cover, guys that can do a better job in zone. Toledo doesn't play a lot of zone, but... I think he'll adjust just fine. Kool-Aid has a fracture in his foot. He's going to have to have a minor surgery here in a couple weeks. So I just think it's going to end up him like falling down a little bit. I'm going to take Quinion Mitchell here. All right. Houston at pick 23 via the Cleveland Browns. I believe this is the final piece of the Deshaun Watson deal. I believe. I'll have to double check that. Picking at 23, also saying they need a wide receiver. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, Xavier Hutchinson looked like he was developing fine. Tank Dell got hurt, unfortunately, but absolute stud right away. Baller. Nico Collins is going to still be with the team next year. Uh, Dalton Schultz will probably leave in free agency. You know, are you going to take a Jadavion Sanders here at pick 23 for your tight end needs? No. Could they move on one in the second round? Yeah. Are there some in free agency? Some, you know. Is it possible that Schultz comes back to the team? Yes, unlikely though. Um, I think it's defense here, you know. Jazan Newton's on the board. Um, interior defensive lineman at Illinois and, you know, definitely a big need for the team. There's not linebackers here that I think make sense unless you want to take a guy like a Peyton Wilson, but... We're going to shore up that defensive interior here. Take Jazan Newton. Cowboys at 24. This is an interesting one. This is a real interesting one. Because... I think... I think they're going to take a tackle here. None of the could be, I mean, because Leighton Vanderish, I think, is like done, right? Like, is, is a neck injury. You know, um, the secondary was weak. But, I mean, they're going to have, what's it, Drawn Bland, I think, broke out. Trevon Diggs will be back, and I think. Stephon Gilmore is still with the team. So I, I, it may not be a corner here. Then again. I think we're going to give him somebody that's a little bit more flexible. Somebody that's a little bit more agile. Like somebody that can be moved around a little bit, play different schemes, move in the nickel. I think we're going to take Tyler Newbin here. Fantastic safety out of Minnesota. Just, just shore up. Give, it's just confidence that's needed in that defense back there, right? I mean, I, you know, they're, they're, they're resetting a little bit in Dallas right now. All right, Green Bay, pick 25. This is going to be a tackle, okay? If you're, by the way, if you're a Green Bay fan, you got a lot to be excited about right now. You have a lot to be excited about right now. Jordan Love just kept putting it together piece by piece and looking more and more like a polished gem. Uh young team with so much talent. I mean, Aaron Jones is the only aging asset on that offense, but, um, you know, A.J. Dillon might actually not return to the team, but uh, 
Dontavion Wicks, rookie last year, looked pretty good. Luke Musgrave, rookie, tight end, looked great. Tucker Craft, rookie, tight end, looked great. Uh, Jaden Reed in the slot and all the, you know, different things they're scheming up for him has been looking great. Obviously, um, Christian Watson uh, hasn't hasn't exactly, like, panned out to what we would hope for for a first-round rookie wide receiver, but team's good. Team's good. Defense is young, fast, hungry. They have some things on defense they need, but we're going to continue just to shore up that, that offensive line, keep Jordan Love protected, and, and, and I think this team is just going to keep balling out. I think they're... I think they're very likely to win this division. You know, obviously Kirk Cousins returns to Minnesota like they're going to contend. I, I just don't see Chicago... I mean, Caleb Williams is going to have to be the truth of truths. This division's tough. This division's tough. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a Marius Mims out of Georgia. Fantastic tackle. Monstrous reach. 6'7", 340 pounds, Marius Mims. Um, a lot of different takes here. Some people think he's one of the top three best tackles in the class. I've seen other and have him at 5'6", but uh, regardless, great talent and uh, continue to improve that. Green Bay offense. Tampa, 26. Now look, let's go ahead and assume here that Mike Evans leaves. Let's go ahead and assume they can't keep Mike Evans. I think wide receiver here is going to be a huge priority. You know, they need a lot of help on defense. They, they're losing a lot. Antoine Winfield, I believe, they'll lose in free agency. You know, on the uh, safety over the top. But as much as I would love Mike Evans to return and just have his whole career there and kind of finish in Tampa, he's, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. But let's just assume in this case that he goes in free agency. I've seen Brian Thomas go here who can kind of replace him as that X, you know, kind of alpha receiver. Troy Franklin is just an absolute speedster. I think he could, it, with the right offense, right scheme, this could be amazing. I don't love him going to Tampa, playing with Baker from a biased fantasy perspective, but <clears throat> I can understand why they would want him from an NFL real-life perspective. But um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take Brian Thomas Jr. here, assuming Mike Evans leaves in this narrative. Arizona, second pick of the... Their second pick of the first round. Uh, they also pick at 27, uh, which they got via Houston in the trade last year uh, at three, I believe, for the Will Anderson deal. Um, so they got, you know in my opinion, the better end of that because, yeah, I'm sure they would love to have a pick at 27, but I guarantee when Arizona made that trade, they didn't think they were getting pick 27 of the first round the following year, All right? Houston just rallied and uh, literally uh, won a playoff game, right, and got knocked out in the second round. So saying they need wide receiver, they do, but – and we know they took Marvin Harrison. And uh, I think they're going to go O-line here. Continue to protect Kyler, improve this offense, and uh, really turn it around. I could definitely see it being Troy Fatano here out of Washington. Had a really great season. Graham Barton I've actually been up and down on. I'm not as sure. He, he's a guy I could see falling into the second. And... Um, it's interesting to me that where they've had Tyler Guyton going in mocks, you know, they're saying his ADP's at 30, but he's a guy that's a lot to like. I'm going to go ahead and say they stick and that Tyler Guyton's their guy. And he goes to Arizona at 27. So Arizona takes Marvin Harrison Jr. at four. Tyler Guyton at four. Continue to protect uh, Kyler Murray. And this offense could be electric. You know, Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison Jr. stack in fantasy could be uh, pretty awesome to have. Buffalo at 28, okay? This is interesting. This is really interesting, okay? Gabe Davis is not going to be on the team in 2024. Khalil Shakur is their kind of, he'll be going to his third year, I believe. Kind of that slot, guys. Had some signs of promise. 
Um, and then they got their two tight ends, Dawson Knox and um, Dalton Kincaid. Kincaid looking like he's going to be a bona fide stud and uh, really continuing to improve. Love the weapons there. There's question marks, obviously, with Diggs. Diggs should be back. I, I don't see a lot of worlds where he's not on the team next year. But... Um, I want to see them go offense here. I want to see them go offense here. I want to see them give Josh Allen another weapon. I want them to say, we need to score more points than Pat Mahomes. Because he beats every defense anyway. <laughs> like, if I have to watch the Bills lose another AFC Championship game to the Chiefs, I'm going to lose it, I think. But Troy Franklin out of Oregon, and obviously this is just, this is me taking someone that could go here we've 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 had brian thomas you know we're going a lot of mocks to the bills at 28 also uh but we're going to take troy franklin here the guy is absolutely electric and can do it all and just he's so fast he's so fast i think he really can stretch his, the defenses that buffalo would play and open up things quite a bit more and uh, make more of an impact than gabe davis did for sure detroit at 29 <clears throat> if Kool-Aid is still here, I think he goes. You know, they they have some, you know, I'm not sure if Frank Ragnall's coming back. I, they have some things on the O-line that they, they're going to need to shore up, but I know they need help at corner too. We're going to go ahead and take Kool-Aid here, assuming all the health stuff checks out from now to the draft. Solid tight end. Honestly, it was at one t uh, tight end corner at one time considered and perceived to be one of the best corners in the class. And then, you know, some different things and injuries at Alabama and up and down season. Um, he's fallen a little bit. And, um, you know, Terry and Arnold is actually probably viewed as the one, if not Nate Wiggins, but uh, very solid here. Cool as well. Baltimore at 30. I I don't see a receiver going here. You know, like they have a shot Bateman for another year. OBJ they did a one year and he won't be back. Not that that's gonna matter. Zay Flowers is developing and turning into a nice wide receiver. Mark Andrews should be healthy. Like I don't I don't I just don't see them going receiver here at thirty. Um, you know, corners a need. Defensive line is a need. I think this is going to be where they go corner. Yeah, and it's Rake and Straws on the board here. We're going to go Rake and Straw here out of Missouri. Very solid uh, corner here, actually. Had a very solid junior year. Mizzou. Tigers, six foot, 188. A little bit smaller than, uh, than Kool Aid is, but. Definitely a big need for uh, for Baltimore right now, and I, I don't see this being receiver. It could be, but I'm, I don't see it. San Francisco picking at 31, and of course Kansas City picking at 32. So offensive line corner definitely have some needs. I think they're going to want to continue to shore up defense here. We're going to go ahead and give him TJ Tampa here. Corner out of Iowa State. Uh, actually, had a good senior year for the Cyclones. You know, there, there's actually a lot to like. I, I feel like I didn't have a lot of red flags on his profile. I mean, I think he just kind of like as a fly under the radar guy a little bit by nature. And maybe it's the name too. And, you know, obviously coming out of Iowa State, there's not a lot for the Cyclones to talk about. But, um should translate over well. He's going to be in a, go to in a good system where they're going to develop him, and uh, I think he'll be another asset to that defense. Kansas City, closing us out, pick 32. We didn't happen last year. Didn't happen the year before. Everyone wanted it to, and it didn't. But look, if this team can take Clyde Edwards-Hilaire at pick 32, then they're definitely capable of taking wide receiver. Okay, Didn't work out with Sky Moore. Okay, Second round pick. Didn't work out 
Uh, excuse me, it worked. It, it did work out last year. Uh, Rasheed Rice is good. Rasheed Rice is a solid second round pick. Um, and it was great that Kansas City was able to get him because a lot of the receivers that went in the second round, like Rice is better than all of them. You know, Josh Downs went before him in the second. Uh, Jonathan Mingo went to care. I think he was the first receiver in the second round taken. That was, that didn't play out. Um, yeah, Josh Downs. So, you know, Rasheed Rice going. But MVS is gone. We know that. Kelsey's looking older and older, in my opinion. And, um, you know, McCole, McCole Hardman's just getting older too. Like, they need other things. I would love to see a wide receiver go here. So, we're going to give him one. We're going to go ahead. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Adonai Mitchell here because Rasheed Rice plays a certain type of way, right? They're using him across the middle of the field a lot. He's wrapping around a ton. He's not a stretch to field guy. He's not hitting him on go routes, things like that. He's, he's running 10 and 20 yard out, like in routes and out routes, things like that, right? But they do need a big athletic guy that can stretch the field a little bit, that can run a go route. Not, I'm not just saying the 50-50 contested catch ball guy like a, like a Hughes. Um, and for that reason, I don't think it would be a Keon Coleman. Lad McConkey is that scrappy, you know, run a five yard across the field route, get yards after catch. Like it's just, Lad, you know, he could go there and, you know, be that kind of random dump off guy that Pat Mahomes would like. But... Because of the receivers leaving, we're going to go ahead and give him Adonai Mitchell here and secure the end of the first round. And there it is. The end of the first official mock draft for my channel. Welcome and thank you if you stayed around the whole time to Fourth and Inches. Um, first of many. I appreciate you for being here for my first video, but uh, yeah, it's mock draft season. We're going to continue to do a lot of mock drafts. I'm going to do a lot of videos on the offensive talent uh, coming into this year's class, obviously from a fantasy dynasty perspective. And um, that is uh, going to be the end of the video for today. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the mock draft. I'm going to keep doing them. Uh, goal is to get a couple out every week if possible. But um, thank you for being here and uh, see you on the next video. Take care.